here I want uh, more mature uh, students or disciples who are really here to go the full way. Not come and take this stuff and go and then, oh, I love this. I said, that may take time. And there are people who came here like that some years ago, and then gradually, gradually, all of that faded out of them. And they became firm and strong, you know, really very powerful. You know? um, but I don't want now, I feel like I'm lazy for that. I don't want to spend time, you know, sort of like uh, watching. Uh, a tomato plant grow. I don't have the time. I just want to come. I want to eat the fruit. I want tomatoes to eat. I don't want to watch them grow. Grow in silence or something. When you come, I want to feel your richness. You're ready. I can pop you in the mouth. Finish. <laughs> they must have something. You know, it's already difficult as it is in the world, because there's so many things seem to trap the human mind. Into so many little crevices, you know, this thing, and, and you're lost, you're off again in the bush, you know. So, you know, for people in that state of mind, they are un- uncountable, uncountable, you know. I'm looking for the ones who have come here for freedom, you know. This is, a, this is what is attractive here. Because you go into any. any, any It's like at the moment your mind is in a stage of a chameleon. Wherever you go, oh, you fit in very nice, and then you leave this place, and then, oh, I don't want to go to, and then, oh, you fit into that place. And so it's just like that. And um, I don't pay attention to that. I'm really not sitting here wondering how Maria is doing. I really am not doing that. There are people who are here much tastier fish than that. And so we just focus on this. Because people, they come, rotate, they come and go. And I feel if you come for two or three weeks, it is possible in this week, in this, in this time, to really discover the, the, the real peril of what I'm pointing to, to discover this peril within yourself. It may take a, a little time to continue to get it, once you've recognized it, to, to sort of like... Uh, mm, Allow the mind to kind of like just dissipate in its in its influence. It comes, goes, come and go. That is what come and go. But now something much firmer is here that doesn't come and go. So the coming and going of tides, you know, the tide come in, tide go out, the moon rise, the moon uh, sets, whatever. This is this is life. There's nothing to report there for me. I want to see if someone finds that which is timelessly unchanging and ever perfect in themselves. Because it is not difficult to, to find it. And once it is found, nobody can keep it. Because it is not to be kept. It is not, nobody can keep it. The Buddha could not keep it. Christ cannot keep it. Not keep it like effort or energy. But you realize this is it. And uh, it underlies, it's like the common denominator to every experience. Everything comes and goes except this. It's not something you have to keep up. It's not a practice also. It's not a practice. Don't be searching for a practice. That which I'm pointing to, however, however long it takes you, this week, this month, this year, this, this, this life, at some point in your existence, you will find it. It's a question of time. Maybe lifetimes. But I am not a bargainer with time. I have no interest in time. Having found a timeless, I am not here to negotiate time. It is like that. Everybody else talks time, time and effort, and gives so much, you know, um, interest to their personalities. And this is such a poor game. It's very poor. You should not be here talking about your personality over and over again falling into states of sorrow and misery due to your own personal so on. This is just so nonsense. You have had such a tremendous privilege and advantage in coming to a place like this that totally supports your liberation. And to be here, you know, shedding tears about your person is just really pathetic. So 
must be in some people the power to rise up beyond these things. It's not that difficult. And I'm not talking to you as a person, because as a person you'll find things very difficult to do. Donkey work. I never spoke to you as a person. I speak to you as consciousness. Because only in consciousness you can be magnificent. You cannot be magnificent as a person. In consciousness you understand things, and somewhere in your understanding it sets all things right. But if you want to labour like a donkey, yeah, be a person. You know, suppose I said you have to before you can realize yourself, you must stop smoking tobacco. It's already a hardship. You can't even do this. Now why are you reading all big fat books about how many practices you cannot do them? Nobody can do them. You entertain yourself with them for a season or two, and then you give all of them up. Every practice you have given up, because they are not true. They are only for the hybrid self. They are not for the, the inhibited self. They are not for the real. The real is very clear and simple. Richard, but there was also something there that never changed, and it's still here, and it was everywhere. And it's and the true it's one me. honors that seeing. They really honor it. They let everything else go, because everything else will go mm. anyway. Hmm? But someone who is smart, intelligent, pure intelligence, lets go of the unreal. They don't have to grasp the real, because they see it is ever here. It is the only unchanging thing. But once you see, you see, uh, you stop uh, monkeying around with the things which are coming and going, the momentary things. They come by themselves. You don't have to entertain them. They come. It's not that one has to be in some strict life and don't enjoy. The senses are also divine. Enjoy, let them enjoy, but don't be attached to them. Don't identify and say, "This is me. This is what I am." And everything is fine because it is passing anyway. As I told you, can you bring back yesterday? No, you cannot. Even with the best memory, the best you can do is to imitate, to regurgitate your some thoughts you have. And why put so much energy in what is ephemeral, what you cannot keep? I'm trying to show you something you need not keep. You only need to discover and to to deeply acknowledge this. You see, rather than to to be. If you turn to your person, you'll always be restless. You'll always be restless in every situation. Whether you are, of course, you can say there are some people who are immersed in the notion of being a person. They may be a good bank clerk or something like that. Do your job well, and all of this. But this is not what life is about. Because you'll find you maybe some people make promises and they they, they say, but well, this person's kept their promise. But at what cost? Why keep a promise when it leaves you stale like old bread? Life doesn't call you to do that. You know. Live your promise. Be who you are, and uh, somehow do not be thinking about tomorrow and next week and so on. You be true today. You don't have to worry about time, yesterday, tomorrow. So everything unfolds perfectly. But nobody is prepared to challenge me on my words. Take it up and try. Then when you fail, you say, "Muji, ha ha, you know, yeah, it's not true. I'm here. I'm not running. I'm here. You are the one running. You ad- ask for advice. It's given, and you run." I'm not running. I want to see if you act on them and come to the fruit of them. You see? So many billions of people on the, on the planet, a handful that seeks the truth, really. Even in spirituality, we compromise. And we're always looking for something. Ask God, do me a favor, do me a favor. You say, Oh, you know, may thy will be done. But really, you're thinking, may my will be done, and uh, you know, God, please bless my will, bless my will, bless my will. We have hypocrites, Olympic hypocrites. And that all the while, the truth is here. So 
just want to see who sees this thing, or who is open enough, willing enough, yearning enough to, to see the obvious. Hmm? When that is there, you don't argue with the world anymore. You don't argue. You don't find anything so deeply wrong that, oh my God! No, you you see, it's all the play of consciousness. Everything is the play of consciousness. In your physical expression, it will play its role also in that. You may find some things you disagree and some things you agree, but it will be more superficial. And if you go back to your family and you find that they have outrageous ideas, basically, about life, you understand that in your own kind way, and you say, oh, you know, but what to do? Because there's nothing you can do. Sometimes nothing you can do. And perhaps if you just accept that and you move with them as much as you are allowed to within your own being, you find it's okay. I can be here also for a bit, knowing that you you are not in a trap. You see. And you hear them say all your things about you know, um, and it will not touch you deeply. But also, if you are there beyond your own determination, because you are placed there by the hand of God, then you will find that somehow, unexpectedly, somehow they are being communicated with at some level, that really. Uh, benefits their life by you being there. For a while, are t- the part of them that feels insecure, that's not able to read you properly, and feels threatened by your unpredictability and your freshness, because we're not used to fresh human beings. Everybody comes from the fridge, basically. <laughs> They're not used to fresh or fresh or fresh one. Oh my God, you know, that's just too direct. You know, it's too unpredictable. We're not accustomed to it. To get a bit stale. And then you know we dip you in water and eat you. That's it. But fresh, we don't like. They're not accustomed to it. Feel, you know, like you know, why you? You see. So, just you move in your own speed, and if you don't carry any judgment in your heart against anybody, you move because you're moving in the confidence of God, not in your confidence as a person. If you're not a person. And then somehow whatever is left there is some form of light in the world somehow. And by that you're guided. And from there you, you draw your joy, you see that. Because wherever you are, you will you will feel grounded somehow. Even if you are hanging upside down, you'll still feel grounded somehow. You know that somehow it's it's like this. If you Step, so to speak, inwardly, back into the the centre of your own heart. You better step all the way. And spirituality is not something to fool around with. Because as soon as you begin to experience some major shift in in seeing, some insights. Resistances are going to begin to stir in you, and you're going to have to be like some some skilled rider on the back of some rodeo show. You're going to be something want to kick you off. But if you hold your grip and find your relaxed centre, you will be on that there, and you will not be shaken up. And then between your legs, you will quiet down. And then, and you can ride it, but not before. You cannot uh, force uh, like that. And so, when you come, if you are saying yes, don't say yes and then maybe at the same time. Because if you hold any any space for your ego to breathe. It will put roots that will grow into big fat locks in a short time. Just go completely if you can. This is why I say one doesn't come to the truth by just mental mental conviction. No, you have to be touched by the finger of God somehow to set be set on fire. And then with that power, that power that comes to you. You have the power to go all the way. 
And all the way is not a question of distance. You know. It's just to have sufficient courage in the face of adversity and trials and tests and so on, that it will not blow you down. You see. And, um, I don't have uh, expectations of people generally. Of people, no. But here I have expectation. I expect that you get it. That's all. That you don't come and just be indulging. Because the mind is also trying to play its own cards here. It will try and play its cards to try and, you know, sort of like keep little interests here, little flickering things here. So your time passes and you miss your chance, you know. Mm. I really don't want to miss my chance. Yes. I just was born for such a long time. Yes. Yes. Your attitude should be like that. There must be such a hunger in you that no force on earth can break your break your heart. You cannot do it. In fact, once you feel that touch of grace already, and you know the magicality of it, you know that it's not your invention, it's not your imagination, that something has kissed you from inside, then surrender everything. Don't salvage anything, just turn to it and say, Yes, all the way. Just live in yes and all the wayness. Just move. You don't have to plan your existence anymore, because you are sitting in the lap of God, like I say. You just move each day. Don't think about the next moment. Just move and get familiar with your own spontaneity. Be with that. And so, so quickly, something expands. It's always expanding. So much joy, so much lightness, so much confidence you know, in life when it is not interfered with by your own personal projections. You know. And you see, you're living in the evidence of that. So this is why I say, what, what reason do you have uh, to even feel that you will fail and what will happen? Just be, just be in it. Don't forecast. Just move. On each single breath, you are present. It is enough like that. All the beings who have gone back into the truth, returned to the truth, they go through their forty days and forty nights. They go through their night of shadows. Eh? Didn't it say in one psalm, Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadows of death. I will fear no evil, knowing that you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Doesn't it say like this? Hmm? For thousands of years, these words are opening the hearts of beings and setting them free. Why not you?